Hi. Um, for everyone who doesn't yet know Dana, Dana Simmons, neuroscientist and artist, and well, actually you explain it more because you did much better than I, and you can show, tell people how you came to brain art or, you know, and how it ended up on Epilepsy Sparks' website because <clears throat> it's beautiful. Yeah, so thanks for having me. I'm really excited to participate in this. Um, so I uh, finished my PhD a couple years ago in neurobiology at the University of Chicago. And while I was there, um, I was doing a lot of work with brain slices and microscopes. And my studies were geared towards autism and finding out how it changes the brain. So a lot of times when you want to see how um, a disease or disorder or different sort of condition changes the brain, you have to take brain slices and look and see what's going on with the cells. You know, it could be, are they a different shape? Did they just have a different level of activity um, or some combination of that? And so to that end, I was looking under the microscope and I was studying these incredible cells, which are called Purkinje cells. They're in the cerebellum, which is like back here. Um, and uh, I was filling them with fluorescent dye and shining lasers on them to learn about how they work. And I just was really inspired one day when I looked through the microscope and I thought to myself, not only is this cool science, but it's art. And I, here's an example, by the way, um, of one of these neurons. So I was really inspired by just beauty inside the brain and how it looks all on its own. And so what I started doing was adding art filters and colors and extra lighting and sort of playing around to see what I could do with my microscope. Um, that was a little bit unconventional, um, but still very methodical and repeatable because that's really important in science and to get a consistent product for really anything. So now what I do is uh, I print these pictures of neurons, which are all from real brains from my experiments and my research. And I print them on brushed aluminum and you can hang them on your wall, uh, which is really fun because they look really beautiful. Um, they're cool conversation pieces. And one of my favorite things about them is that people don't necessarily realize that these are neurons. The right. Okay, that's a weird looking tree. Is that a drunk tree? What's going on? You know? A lot of people ask if it's coral and it does look like coral. And before, but I never, it's funny what you see or you don't see. I've never thought coral, but maybe I'm just not very, yeah. Maybe I've not seen the right coral. So carry on. <laughs> coral or like antlers or river tributaries or lightning, a whole variety of things in nature have a pattern. And that's one of the things that I find uh, extra interesting. So a lot of times people come up to me and they say, oh, that thing's cool. What is it? And so then I can get into this conversation about science and how the brain works. Um, which is nice because it attracts a completely different crowd of people. And I try to show that science can be beautiful, science can be accessible, um, and it's involved in everybody's life. So I, I try to use these to promote that message. And you write that way too, because for those who haven't read it yet, Dana did a vlog for us. And she doesn't use too many long words that are intimidating or anything. You've put things into layman's terms, which is just like crucial. It sounds like a simple thing, but a lot of people in your field don't know how to do that. And so, yeah, it's a really good piece. If anybody's interested, it's on, it's on the blog, but, um, sorry, I interrupt you again, please continue. <laughs> my cat just sat on my lap. Oh. <laughs> This is little s'mores. Say hi, s'mores. Okay. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. yeah. So you have that, um, it, so you have like these beautiful brushed um, aluminum or aluminium, we remember. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> I never realized why um, it's pronounced that way. I didn't realize you spelled it differently as well. So I learned something when you emailed me. The other I day. don't know the reasons behind these things, but it's quite funny anyway. Um, yeah. The difference. Um, but people can get your pieces of art through like really simple things too. Like um, well, we have, oh, because I've ordered for this phone. Oh yes, yes, the magnets, they're stunning. And a phone cover I'm getting. Have you got one there or not? Oh. <laughs> 
Um, I don't have the phone cover yet. I have some of the art on the wall. It's noisy. <laughs> <laughs> Could you, you send the cat as well? Because really cute, cute cat. No, definitely the cat is not for sale on my website. <laughs> <laughs> I love her dearly and she's staying here, but she likes the art. You like the art? Yeah, okay. Oh, she's so cute. So yeah, people can um, get magnets, they can, what else have we got? Oh yeah, like cushions, um, yeah. blankets, um, and also I'm open to making new accessories. So if there's something that, like I had one person who said to me, like, I really want leggings with dendrites on them. Um, so we made it work. So I'm open to new ideas, collaborations. I'm flexible. Can we have mugs? Mugs, yeah. I love mugs. Oh, and what about um, covering uh, covers for uh, laptops? Oh yeah, yeah, I can do that. I believe I have one of those, so I can add that on there. And if that would be brilliant. I would totally buy one of those. I really, yeah. My poor boyfriend, I think he doesn't realize yet there are going to be your Pekinji neurons exactly. all over that. <laughs> 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 but the great thing is though they come in different colors so like some of the um what, what would be the right word but some of the ways in which they're done i'm it's not my favorite but there are other ones i'm like oh that is lovely you know i think it's just everyone has different tastes right and it's great to have that variation available there's a variety yeah and i i have a variety because you're right everybody does have different tastes um yeah. like this one has a lot of pink in the background I love pink, but I know not everybody does. Um, so like I have one, I don't know how well you can see Oh yeah, that. that's one I like. So simpler, like less pink and it's more, um, I don't it know. Like stripes, the neurons in gold and it has some faint color in there. Um, mm -hmm. I also have some that are less artistic and more focus on the original neurons. So more how it would look in a traditional experiment, which would be one color in the neuron and then just like a black background. Which one's that? It's not coming into my mind, which one that is. Um, here, I'll show you. Let me okay. grab it. Got your assistant, good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so here's one. And so the, the technique for getting the color in the background is a little bit different. Um, so when it's just a black background, it means that I only, uh, I didn't have the background lights on and so you're only seeing what's fluorescent. Uh, which is the neuron there, because it's filled with fluorescent dye. When you do have something more like uh, the one behind me, and you can see like all that pink and stuff, that is the texture of the brain slice. So you see the neuron, which is embedded, it, it's inside the slice, it's part of it. And then you see the tissue from the brain slice in the background. Ah, that's what that is. By leaving extra like extra lamps, extra lights, uh, and sort of just like playing around with it to get stripes. Oh, and have you got any images of more than one neuron together? Uh, yeah, I do have a few. Oh, I mean like that were literally touching. I mean like in the, in the, oh, oh. have yeah. you got one close there? I do have a few. And so the, the way I get those is um, I would do an experiment in a brain slice with one neuron and then I would, they're, they're all sort of lined up. Uh, that's just how Purkinje cells are. And so if I would go like a few neurons away, uh, there's one here, one here, and then they have their branches that kind of reach out. Oh, I know the piece you mean. Sorry. Yes, it's, it's coming. To, yeah, they, they're almost like little elegant, but getting in each other's way trees. That's what they look like. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. And they sort of overlap a little bit, um, which is actually a problem for the experiment. So I have to like make sure they're far enough apart. Otherwise, you can't see all the time which branch goes to which neuron. Um, oh, you could write a little story just about that type. That would be so cool because I swear people would love to have an explanation as to what that image actually is. Oh, you know, yeah. Not just neuron. That would be so cool. If you if you want, anyway, I'd read it. <laughs> Great to get it out there. Um, have you got any... Um, Oh, what was I going to say? It's been too long. I wanted to say, yes, how can people contact you? And um, have you got a uh, message you want to leave with everybody for the evening? Because it's quite late here. Sure, yeah. Um, so I have a website. It's dana-simmons, 
S-I-M-M-O-N-S dot com. Um, all my work is on there. There's a brief summary of my research, lots of cool neuron pictures um, and fun stuff to order. And I can add that laptop case and some mugs. And <laughs> I know I love to you, it would be perfect. Um, and in terms of a message, uh, I, I would just say, I try really hard to promote with my work that science is for everyone. Um, it's not something to be intimidated by. Um, it's complex, it is challenging, but even for us, it's even for scientists, it's challenging. And the more questions you ask, uh, the better off you are. And it just takes a little patience and really, it's for everybody. It's really important um, to think through facts and try to figure out what makes sense. And sometimes you find something really beautiful and unexpected in the process, like a cool neuron. So mm -hmm. 